Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another Game Boy development tutorial. Before we get started with today's topic, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who's been putting lots of comments on the channel and asking lots of questions. Quite a few of you have also been saying you've been creating your own Game Boy games. If you have, I'd love to hear from you. In a future video, I'd like to put together examples of things that other people have created, just so we can inspire people watching these videos so they can have a go. So it doesn't matter how far you've got in your game, whether it's finished, whether it's part way through, I'd love you to share it with me, and then hopefully I can put a video together in future. Right, on to today. Today we're gonna to be looking at an effect called the parallax effect. So this is what you see when you're traveling in a car or in a train and you look out the window and things in the far distance seem to move faster than things at the front. So it's a nice effect to put into a game. It's used in all kinds of different games on the Game Boy. And I'm gonna show you how we do that in GBDK today. Let's get started. This is the background image we're gonna use. You can see I've kind of got three layers. I've got the clouds layer, the mountain, and the trees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop the screen render at a particular point as it comes down. So what we're talking about here is scan lines. So the way pretty much every screen draws, but an LCD screen like on the Game Boy, is it draws line by line, and we can set code that will trigger at a particular point in the line. So it's called a scan line interrupt. So the places we're gonna interrupt are shown here in the red lines. So we're gonna split the screen into three. The top section is just the clouds. So that's gonna stop a scan line. We're gonna interrupt the scan line at the 20 second pixel down. So in hexadecimal, that's at zero X 35. And the next time we're gonna stop it is the bottom of the mountains. It's 108 pixels down and that's zero X six C. So let's get started actually looking at the code and how we bring that together. If you haven't already seen my tutorial on displaying backgrounds on the Game Boy, please go and see that. I'll put a link below. Basically, I'm not going to show you that again. So I've taken this background. I've used my Game Boy PNG converter to create two C files that you need for the background. And I've written a small bit of code just to display those. Again, pretty much identical to my background tutorial. So if you look in here, I've already got parallax background data. That's all the pixels and parallax background map, that's telling it which tiles to display where on the screen. And then in the main, I'm loading those two in. I've got performant delay, which I've used in lots of my tutorials, which is just a, a performant way of pausing the screen that doesn't kill the CPU on the Game Boy too much. I'm loading in the background data and the background tiles, showing the background, turning the display on. And then in my game loop, I'm just scrolling the background one in the X direction, so I move it to the left one pixel every time it goes through this game loop. So just to show you how that works, we make that and open it up in the BGB emulator. We have a background moving just to the left, so the whole thing is moving all at the same speed. We haven't got any parallax effect there at all, but just to show you that it's displaying and we can see what's going on. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is to set up some interrupt. So an interrupt is basically where we can set something so that when something happens in the hardware on the Game Boy, we can run some code. So the interrupt that we're going to want to use for this demo is actually the LCD interrupt. So the way to actually start setting up some interrupts, the first thing you need to do is run this disable interrupts. This will disable interrupts whilst the next bit of code actually is executed. And we're going to create a function that's going to get called and give that to the interrupt. So this add, add LCD, that's basically gonna get called when this interrupt happens and we're gonna pass in a function that we're gonna make in a moment and that's just gonna be called interrupt LCD. And then we need to enable interrupts again afterwards. So you'll see it's got a squiggly line at the moment because that doesn't exist yet. So that's my method that I'm gonna write up here. It doesn't need to return anything, so it's gonna be a void. We don't need to pass anything in, so there's no arguments here. So that's now saying that when the LCD interrupt is called by the hardware, it should come to our code, this interrupt LCD. So that's the first part. But we haven't actually set up this interrupt to know what to do yet. It just will do something. So what we need to do is set a few different properties that are kind of baked into GBDK. So the first one is we need to enable a particular mode for that interrupt. So we use this stat reg. And we're going to set this to a special value, which is 0x45. That's setting a particular bit of the memory to a particular value that the Game Boy knows um, will be a particular way of using the LCD handler. And what this basically is going to do is enable us to tell the LCD handler to actually 
call the interrupt at a particular line as it's drawing down the screen. So I'm just going to write myself a comment in there so I can remember what it particular is. So that tells it it should be called at a particular line, but now we need to tell it what that line is. So another special hard baked in one, LYC reg. And this we set to the hexadecimal version of whatever line number we want it to actually get called at. So in the first bit that we want it called, we want it called right at the top when it's drawing the first line. So the first line will be the zero line. So we give it the hexadecimal value of zero. So that's now set up an LCD interrupt that will interrupt at a particular line and that line is set to be zero. The final thing we need to do here is actually tell it to turn on the interrupts that we want. So we've set up the interrupt, we need to turn it on. So we can use that calling set interrupts. Uh, and we want to have two interrupts. We want the normal screen has finished drawing, this VBL one, and we want our new LCD one. So we're gonna use a bit more of that bit maths that I've been talking about in some of the tutorials, and we're gonna add the two together. So again, they're two constants kind of baked into GBDK. So the first one is VBL I flag, and we're gonna use a binary or, is this pipeline, and we're gonna add that to the LCD interrupt, which is LCD I flag. So that will set both those interrupts on, and we set one of them up here. Before I forget, so that we don't have this later, I'm gonna take out that scroll that I had in there just to show you it working, because otherwise I'm bound to forget to do it later and then things won't work. So that's all the interrupts set up in the main method. Now we need to actually do something in our interrupt LCD. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move each part of the background by a different amount. So we need to have three different values that we can actually check and increment each time, so add to each time we're going through our game loop. So those three that we're gonna create, they're all gonna be uint8 values. I'm gonna create them as global variables up here. Uh, and I'm gonna call them background offset one in the x direction. And I want three of them. So first bit for the clouds, second bit for the mountains, third bit for the trees. So I want to set all of those initially to be zero. So in my main method, the first bit of code that gets called on your Game Boy just set them all to zero. And what we want to happen is each time our while loop, our game loop runs, we want each one of those background offsets to be incremented, to be increased, but by a different amount. So for the clouds, which background offset one, we only want it to move one pixel each time the screen is drawn. So we're gonna use uh, the plus equals operator. That basically means get the value on the left and add the value on the right to it each time. So that's gonna add one to background offset each time. So the first time it comes in, it'll be zero here, but the first loop will set it to one, second loop will set it to two, third loop will set it to three, etc. Background offset two, which is our mountains, we want to move faster than our clouds, but only a little bit, because the mountains are still very far away. So we're gonna set that equal to two. So the first loop it comes through, it'll be two, then it'll be four, then it'll be six, you get the idea. And the third one, which are trees, they're much closer to the, the front of the view where the user would be. So we're gonna move those a lot more. We're gonna move those 10 each time it comes through the loop. I'm also gonna slow down the display a little bit. So I'm gonna increase my performance delay so that it waits longer in between uh, drawing each one. So I'm gonna set that to seven just so we can slow the whole thing down a bit. So great, that will create our offsets that will be drawn, but we're not actually doing anything with them. So we've got to use our interrupt LCD to actually do something with our offsets. So the way that we're gonna do that is each time interrupt LCD is called, we're gonna check for the value of LYC reg. And the first value is that it's gonna get called on is when it's zero. So we're gonna use a statement called a switch statement. You can see here, if I just hit tab, it'll, it will complete the kind of basic template for a switch statement. So a switch statement is expecting a particular thing that you're gonna be checking what the value of it is. So we're gonna check LYC reg, which is, the value at which the scan line interrupt will get called and initially it's zero. So in the first case, we want this code to execute when LYC reg is zero. So you'll see there's this case, the value ex you expect a colon, then the code you're gonna run when it is that, and then this break, which basically means exit this switch statement, go on to the next line down here, don't run any more code. So the code we want in here is we want to move the background and then we want to change the value of LYC reg to be the next value. So we're gonna start with moving the background. So we use move BKG 
So we can't use scroll background for this demo because that messes up with this whole offset thing. So you've got to move it to a particular X and Y position rather than scroll BKG, which moves it by a particular X and Y position. So the position we want to move it to initially is the value of our first background offset in the X direction and zero in the Y, we're not moving it up or down at all. So that will move it by that position. Now we want to change the value of LYC reg Make sure you get the right one. And we want to move that to be what the next value, the next kind of line we want to stop at is. And so the next line we want to stop at, if you remember from that original diagram that I drew, is when it's at this hexadecimal value, 0x35. So that's the top of the mountains. So that's when we want it to stop next. So we're going to put another case in, so we just copy this case don't need this default case so default is a particular case for switch that means if it doesn't match any of the others then run this one I'm just going to replace that and so what we want to look for now is when the scan line hits 0x35 which is where we've hit here and we want it to do the next bit of code so the next bit is to move by background offset 2 and then set lyc reg to be the next value we want which again if you remember back to the diagram is 0x 6c and then copy the case again now this will be the case when it actually gets to 0xc want to remove by background offset 3 and then the offset that we want to tell it to look for next is right at the beginning we want to reset back to the beginning so back to what we set it here to be 0 at the top again so if we just quickly go over this all it's doing is each time this is called by the interrupt it checks what the value of lyc reg currently is if it's zero, then we're going to be moving the clouds. We're going to move them by offset one. And then when we're going to set it to look for offset two, when it's offset two, we're going to move it to the trees. And then when it's the trees, we're going to move it by background offset three. Now, because it's already drawn these other two on that kind of draw of the screen, by the time it gets to this one, this move background won't affect the ones that have already been drawn. And that's the same for each layer. And that's why you can move them at different speeds because you're only moving the remaining bit of the screen to be drawn. And then it resets to the next draw of the screen and starts all over again. So that's pretty much all the code we need there. So if we build that, so there's our original code where it's all scrolling at the same speed. And here's our parallax code. So you can see the clouds are moving very, very slowly. The mountains are moving very, very slightly faster and the trees are whizzing by because they're right up close by the window. So that's a basic parallax effect. You can actually use that interrupt for lots of different effects. If you've seen effects like kind of the screen warping, or you've even played some of the race games where the road kind of bends as you're driving around, they're actually all using um, this interrupt but using slightly different tricks on it. So hopefully maybe in a future video we'll show you how we can use the interrupt for different things. But that's all for now. So please make sure you hit the subscribe button, tell everyone about it, let us know any comments, but otherwise we'll see you in the next tutorial.